bananas are not real. Bananas do not exist. At least that's what the children of England thought during World War II. It's the history of food rationing. Hey. Food rationing is typically tied to warfare, specifically modern warfare. Now, while there were some instances of food rationing that happened in the 19th century, like the Siege of Lucknow in 1857 and some of the conflicts in the Boer Wars, it didn't really become the modern system that we think of today until World War I in England. Now, England did end up rationing their food, but it wasn't because of a food shortage. Most of the supply lanes actually stayed open throughout the entire war. So why did people feel like they needed to ration the food that was there? Well, tell me if this sounds familiar. It's because people kept going out and panic buying. 100 years later, we haven't learned anything. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, guys. Panic buying will not help anything. It's never going to work. America didn't have a formal food rationing process during World War I, but we did have a number of propaganda slogans. Of course, the good old American way. Herbert Hoover promoted things like meatless meals and wheatless Wednesdays. And actually, consumption of both meat and wheat dropped by an estimated 15%. Now, World War II was a different story. For the Second World War, the British government was extremely concerned about making sure their citizens would have enough nutrients they needed to continue fighting, continue going to their jobs in the factories, and just generally keeping calm and carrying on. So for that, they enlisted two special scientists. Who wants to learn about Elsie Widowson? The best thing about that is there are actual crickets behind me. Oh, and a frog. Elsie Widowson is one of the coolest food scientists and you should know about her. She was one of the first female graduates of Imperial College in London and she got a PhD in chemistry graduating in 1931. She, along with her partner, Dr. Robert McCants, were in charge of creating a rationing system that would ensure that all British people got the right amount of nutrients. Her work was also instrumental in creating the guidelines that dietitians still use today. She studied all different kinds of plants along with some animals in order to figure out what foods provided what vitamins and nutrients to the human body. Elsie also came from a family of strong, smart women. Her younger sister actually trained as a nuclear physicist before leaving to become a beekeeper. I mean, I get it. You gotta follow your heart. Straight to the bees. She later became a world-renowned authority on bees, so I'd say she smashed that decision. Elsie and Robert were also responsible for the first government-mandated additions of vitamins into foods, starting with calcium in bread. During the war, lots of foods essentially vanished from the market in the UK, especially fruits. Lemons were essentially gone, apples were limited to just one per customer, and oranges were only sold to very young children or pregnant women who could prove that they were pregnant. The thought process was that they needed the nutrients more than the average person. But perhaps the most legendary food to disappear was bananas. Since they're an imported food, they were one of the first to leave and one of the last to come back, which meant that children living in England at that time had never seen one. A poll conducted in 1942 in London of five to seven year old children found that not only had the vast majority of them never seen a banana, but many of them didn't believe they existed at all. It's a fake. It's fiction. It's a total fabrication. It's a made up tale. Wrong. Bananas aren't real, guys. The first thing rationed in England during World War II wasn't actually a food. It was, not surprisingly, gasoline. But in January of 1940, they did begin to ration food products, beginning with, of course, the old favorites, butter, bacon, and sugar. It wasn't until the second draft of food rationing that things started to get real British. Jam? tea and biscuits. There were also different kinds of cereals and different sorts of fats and meats that were added to the list as well. Personally, I'm kind of surprised the British didn't riot right then and there. Rationing in America wasn't nearly as strict as it was in the UK, but it did still happen. American housewives got books of tickets or rationing coupons, which they could use to purchase special ingredients like meats, fats, like butter, and most importantly, bacon. Now, bacon was an important ingredient, not because of the way the women served it, but the way in which they cooked it and what they did with it after. The American military requested that all women reserve the fats that left over from the bacon cooking and turn it back into the military. 
Why? Because those fats could be used to produce glycerin, which is one of the most important ingredients to make bombs. In fact, the Walt Disney Company produced a animated cartoon at this time. It said that every skillet full of fat was a little munitions factory. American ration books were divided up by color. Red stamps for things like meats and butters, and blue stamps for processed foods like canned goods. And they featured slogans on the front that said things like rationing means equal food for us all. Ah, but there's the rub. How do you decide what's fair when some people are using an ingredient only to cook for their families and others are using it to earn a living? That brings us to the now infamous sugar book, the rationing book that was used exclusively for sugar during rationing. Sugar was rationed in the States until 1947, and the average American housewife could only get about half a pound per person per week, which was only 50% of the average consumption before the war. However, commercial bakeries and confectioneries got about 70% of what they had been consuming before the war, which meant suddenly it was a lot cheaper and a lot easier to buy processed baked goods that had been made outside the home instead of making them yourself, which led a lot of American housewives to wonder if maybe it wasn't all a little bit of a government ploy, especially after the war had ended, to encourage them to go out and buy baked goods somewhere else. And here's a food you probably never thought would be affected by the ration dog food. Up until the 1940s, dog food was mostly served wet and in cans, like some of the food that we see today. But during the outbreak of World War II, that tin was needed for munitions. So in America, in 1942, they passed a law saying no dog food was allowed to be sold in tin cans, which is why a lot of manufacturers switched to dehydrated food, aka the dry kibble that you know today. Food rationing in the UK lasted a shockingly long time. It wasn't over until 1954, almost a decade after the war had ended. And then in 1974, part of it came back, the sugar ration, but this time it wasn't because of a military conflict. No, this time it was because the sugar producers in the Caribbean had found out that Americans would pay a whole heck of a lot more for their sugar and started diverting all of their supply flows. The sooner Britain learns that nothing gets between an American and their sugar, the better it'll be for everybody.